Hello, thanks very much for joining me again. This week's still water pattern is a fly called the Bejesus. It's a competition pattern that I got from a guy called Mick McCormack many years ago. Uh, so in the vise, I have a Hanak 230 barbless hook in size 10. And I'm going to be using the UTC Ultra Thread and it's the 140 denier. So first thing I'm going to do is get plenty of wax on the front end of my thread just to give me the grip I need. I'm going to start a couple of millimetres back from the eye and using my rag end as a guide I'm going to put a layer of thread down. And I'm going to just come to the point of the hook and remove my waist. Then before I do anything else, I'm going to build a small rugby ball shape at the back here. Because this fly is going to have quite a long tail and this just helps stopping the marabou wrapping around the hook. So there we go. I've got my um, little rugby ball shape in there. So the, for the tail of this fly, I'm going to use some of the Fish Hunter marabou. It's a UV and, it, and this is the the medium olive. So I've already got a feather out here and I'm going to take my th use my thumbnail as a guide and I'm going to take quite a big strip off. Now I don't want this clumpy end on the end so I'm just going to off camera snip that away and then I can catch in My marabou. I've just brought my thread up to the front to make it a bit easier for myself. Now I'm wanting to leave plenty of space at the front because this is a booby fly and I need to have plenty of room at the front to catch it in. So I'm just going to bring my thread back to my rugby ball and then at this point I'm going to trim the tail. Now as I said it's come from the competition scene this so there's certain rules to length I'm just going to come in with my right hand, pinch with my thumb and forefinger, and then take away the rest. I've licked my thumb and forefinger in my left hand, and I just want the marabou to sit out the way, because it can be a fluffy material, and it's a bit of a pain at times. Now, for the rib of this fly, I'm going to use some of this stuff. Now, you might not be able to see the label. It's come from a haberdashery. And I often find myself in haberdasheries um, looking for little bits and bobs like this. And uh, as you can see, it's a blue flashy rib. So I'm just going to take a bit of that off. And cut it away. The thing with haberdasheries is, um, you know, I think that was about 90p. Whereas if you go into a fly tying shop and um, order some of the ribbon materials and whatnot, it can end up being quite expensive. So I'll just catch that in on my side. Come back to the beginning of the body. Now for the uh, the body, I'm going to use some of uh, Trout Stalker Dubbin. And this is in the Caddis Green. Sorry, I should have took some of this out. But I'll just grab a pinch now. It's quite a vivid green. And I'm going to catch some of that onto my thread, like so. If I've got too much, I can always remove it later. So just dub that on. Try and get that rib to come out the way. Push your dubbing up to the start of your fly. And then simply come up the body like so. Now you'll notice that I've still got quite a lot of room at the front here, which is intentional. Now before I bring the rib up, it's not the most robust material, so what I'm going to do is using a little bit of super glue here, I'm just going to come to the inside of my rib and give it a little coat of super glue. Now all this does 
and make sure you catch the super glue end down onto your bourbon. It just gives the fly a little bit of longevity. If, if you don't do this, what tends to happen is the first fish or two you catch, the rib comes undone and the fly becomes redundant. So if you just do this, it gives it a little bit of longevity. So I brought it all the way to the front now and I'm going to catch that with just two turns. Once I've got that caught in, I can bring it back, come back on myself, and then I can just snap that away. Okay, so it's all looking not too bad so far. Before I do anything else, I'm going to just come in with my dubbing brush here and lightly loosen some of the fibres up from the body. Don't be too brutal with it or you'll just rip in about your rib. So once you've done that, you comb that back. And there's just an erroneous green strand there that I'm going to try and pluck out. There we go. Okay. So, we're doing okay. Now, in the Insta, Insta bar, you'll see an information tag on how I make my booby eyes. I've already preformed one here. And if you have a look at that, you'll notice that I use a, a little pin. And I've got a hole here to line it up. And before I do anything else, I'm going to get a little wax onto my thread. I mean, the UTC thread comes pre-waxed, but a little bit more never hurts. It just helps to get some purchase on the materials. So I'm going to put one loop in just over the hole and that should give me fairly even eyes. Then pulling all my materials back, I'm going to wind my booby eyes up onto the shank of the hook. That one sit just nicely for me. So it's come there. Then I'm going to put four turns one way. So, excuse my fingers, I'm just putting four turns in the other eye. And then I can come at the front of the hook. Now, I could simply uh, whip finish at this point, if I could whip finish, uh, or put a half hitch in. But what I'm going to do is I'm now going to add a layer of super glue to my thread. And I'm going to do exactly the same again. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then now, I can finish the fly off. And I'm going to use some UV resin to do this. So just a little bit at the front because what I don't want to do is fill my eye full of resin so catch that in like so then I can take my thread away come in with my pen And cure it off. Now this is on a, a as I said at the start, a size 10 hook. Um, I usually like to tie this fly in size 12 and 14. It's it's much more it's really effective in the smaller sizes, and it's great to use as a team if you're washing line in some dial backs or crunchers perhaps. This is a great little point fly and it takes its fair share of fish. So um thanks to Mick McCormack for handing this over many years ago. There's quite a story to it actually, but um, I'll not go into that here. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. First method, if you want to make them up, that's how to do it.